Hi, I'm Angela Nicholson and I'm at Nikon UK's head office to take a look at a pre-production sample of the new DF. As you can see, the DF has a retro design that has been inspired by some of Nikon's past film SLRs. However, inside is the same 16.2 million pixel full frame or FX sensor and XP3 processing engine as the top of the range Nikon D4. On the top of the camera here, we've got dials to control essential aspects such as shutter speed, sensitivity and exposure compensation. Each of these dials has a lock to prevent them from being knocked out of position. There's also a dial over here for setting exposure modes, with settings for aperture and shutter priority, manual and program mode. There are no automatic options. Let's take a closer look at the dials. The shutter speed dial has markings running from 4 to 1 4 thousandths of a second, adjusting in hold stops. There's also a B for bold mode and a T for time mode, along with an X for flash synchronisation. This one-third step setting allows the rear command dial to be used to set shutter speed and then the value can be adjusted in one-third stops. Over here the exposure compensation runs between plus and minus 3 EV, while the sensitivity can be set in the native range of ISO 100 to 12800, with expansion settings taking this down to ISO 50 and up to ISO 204800, the same as the D4. One last thing to note before we leave the top plate. The shutter release is threaded, so you can use a traditional plunger-type cable release. As it's an SLR, the DF has an optical viewfinder, and it's the same one as on the D4, so it has 100% field of view. It's nice and bright, so it will serve users of manual focus lenses well. On that subject, as it has a novel collapsible metering coupling lever, the DF is compatible with just about all of Nikon F-mount lenses. According to Nikon UK, there are only around three non-compatible Nikon F lenses. On the back of the camera, there's a 3.2 inch 921,000 dot LCD screen, which reveals plenty of detail and doesn't seem to suffer excessively from reflections. Around the LCD, we have all the buttons we'd expect from a digital SLR, along with a switch to select the metering mode. Turning to the front of the camera, there's a front command dial, which looks a little bit different from the ones on Nikon's recent D-series cameras. There's also a button here, which when used in conjunction with the front and rear command dials, allows the bracketing options to be selected. The focus mode is controlled in the same way as on Nikon's other recent SLRs, by using this switch to select manual or autofocus mode, and then pressing this button and rotating the command dials to select the various AF options. Pressing the menu button reveals that the menu is pretty much as you'd expect from a modern Nikon SLR, but there are no video options as the DF is a stills only camera. The DF feels really nicely put together, it's solid and robust feeling. It's also weather sealed to the same level as the D800, so you don't need to worry if the weather takes a turn for the worse when you're out shooting. As this is a pre-production sample, I can't show you any images from it. We'll have to wait until we get a full production sample in for testing. However, as it's got the same sensor and processing engine as the D4, and tried and tested metering, white balance and autofocus systems, we can be reasonably confident that it's going to perform well. For more information about the Nikon DF, take a look at my preview on techradar.com.